Welcome to Art with Miss Allen, with me, Miss Allen. On this channel, we will be drawing and coloring, cutting and gluing, painting, and doing a lot of other fun art activities that we can make together at home. I cannot wait to make art with you. Hey guys, it's Miss Allen. I thought today we could do a painting that is inspired by an artist named Heather Galler. She's a folk artist who uses lots of different patterns and lines to make art in her own paintings. So today I thought we could take a, in, an inspiration from her and make flower bouquets. And they're kind of abstract, like especially this circular flower. Um, but we are gonna be having so much fun with this. And I'll show you a picture real quick of Heather Galler's stuff before we get started. This is one of Heather Galler's paintings. She does a lot of different flower paintings, usually in vases. And I really love how she has taken lines and made different patterns everywhere, especially that table. But you can really see that this is not realistic art. Um, this is more of an abstract take on flowers, but I think it came out so cool. And so I thought we could do our own Galler inspired paintings. For my supplies, you are going to need a big piece of paper to go under your paper so that you don't get it messy. You're going to need a blank piece of paper. I'm using a little half sheet just so it doesn't take me as long, but you can go as big as you want. Um, you're, I'm going to use some India ink. Now, India ink is kind of messy. You need to be very careful with India ink. It's very dark, like a Sharpie, and it's permanent. So the reason I'm using it is because it's waterproof and I'm going to be making, I'm going to be finishing my picture with watercolor paints today. If you do not have India ink, which I'm betting most of you don't, you can just use Sharpie to draw. You do need to use some type of a permanent marker to draw your picture if you're going to watercolor with the watercolors I'm using. If you don't have watercolors and you don't have paint and you don't know what to do, use a pencil, use markers, use crayons, anything you have and that will be perfect. I'm just trying a different material today just to show you how it's done. So with that, I'm also going to need a paintbrush. I'm using the itty bitty paintbrush today so I can have some detail work. And I'm going to need two cups of water. One is for clean water and one is for dirty when I get to the point where I'm making the watercolor. But let's go ahead and get started. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to be painting upside down for you guys today. But how I'm going to do this is I've poured a little bit of my ink in a cup. You can see how dark it is. Well, maybe you can see. Now you can see it's pretty dark. Um, but I'm going to start by making this bouquet of flowers, this vase of flowers, and making sure that there's like this imaginary line in the middle of this paper. The top half is just for flowers. The bottom half is for the vase and the table. So I'm going to start in the top here. And to be more like Heather Galler, I'm going to use circles and designs and petals for my flowers. So maybe that looks like this. Maybe I could have two circles, like a donut. I could put a design in one of my circles or both if you wanted and then I could do some petals now my petals I want to make sure I'm going slow and trying to make them all the same size if it's not perfect it's not a big deal but I'm gonna go slow and take my time that way I can make them as consistent meaning they're all matching as much as possible so one more maybe yeah, so that's not too bad. That's a pretty easy flower. I'm going to keep on going. And I'm going to uh, move it in just a little bit. Maybe my second flower can be a little different. Maybe I'm just going to do one circle. 
and I could do a little dots inside of them to make it look like there's pollen pop, maybe. And then maybe this flower has long skinny petals, nice long skinny petals. Yeah, so kind of like that. And I know you can't really see that. I'm sorry, my angle's not great today. But now this one looks a little bit more like a real flower and this one has a little bit more design in it. I'm gonna do a really um, Heather Geller inspired flower up here and I'm just gonna use a bunch of circles. So maybe one circle, two circles, three circles. I might need a little more ink right there. And then I could put some petals inside of here, inside of my circles as a design. I can even put some petals going around the outside of the circle. Now if I do that, I'm going to hit my other flowers. So I'm going to use an overlapping technique where you stop when you hit the petal and then you act like you go behind it by picking up your paintbrush or your pencil or whatever you're drawing these flowers with by picking it up and starting on the opposite side. Yeah, so here's some three really quick simple flowers. You can add way more than this if you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the leaves. Leaves are pretty easy. Um, I'm going to start somewhere on a flower. I'm going to pull a curved line off. Start at the point and pull a curved line back in. Pretty easy leaf. I can put a line in the middle and maybe have some diagonal lines for the veins of the leaf just to make it look a little more leafy. And I'm going to give each of my flowers at least one leaf. I might do more than one, but I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward that part. So, now I've got some leaves for my flowers. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the vase. Now I left this big giant space at the bottom for the vase. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start on one side of all of my flowers. It doesn't really matter where you start. I'm going to start on one side and I'm going to bring a diagonal line down. I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to leave myself some room. Now I can do the same thing on this side, diagonal line down, and I'm moving these diagonal lines in opposite directions. They're tapering, which means they're getting closer as it goes down to the bottom. For the bottom of my vase, to make it look a little bit 3D, I'm going to do a curved line, just like that. So now there's the start of a vase. I can do the design on the vase. I'm gonna keep my design simple today on the vase. I'm gonna make some nice curved lines for my vase. So yeah, there's my vase. Now we can do the table. Table's super easy to make. I'm gonna start on the vase, make a horizontal line out. Start on the vase on the altar opposite side, make a horizontal line out. And I went all the way out. That's that overlapping technique again. When we do this line, it makes it look like the vase is sitting on the table. It makes it a little bit more 3D, which is kind of cool. Now I can do a design on the table. Heather Geller does a lot of different designs, but one of the designs I notice she uses a lot is checkers. So I'm going to make my table a checkerboard. I'm going to make Oops, excuse me. Ha, see, got it on me. It'll be okay. I'll have to wash it off later. It's a little stronger than paint. So if you're using that India ink, be careful. Don't touch it. But I'm going to make some vertical lines down the paper. And then I can make some horizontal lines going across.
Now, when I color this, I can do a real checkerboard where I do an AB pattern. AB means you skip one. So color, not, color, not. Or if you have two colors, let's say you have pink and yellow. You could go pink, yellow, pink, yellow. And then when you skip to this line, you do the opposite, yellow, pink, yellow, pink. You don't have to do this. You can make up your own design, but now we have to let that dry before I get into the watercolor. So I'm gonna clean up with the ink and then I'm going to get started with the color once it's dry. So now that my painting is dry, I can start doing the color. Now I have some nice watercolors here. It's okay if they get a little messy, but the way I'm gonna keep them from getting messy is with my water cups. I have two here. I have one jar of water and then I've put one in a cup. The reason I've changed them a little bit is so I can tell the difference. Having the same cup makes it a little tricky. This jar is going to be clean water. This is the water that I'm going to use to wake up my colors. This cup is the dirty water. This is the one that I'm going to clean my brush before I get any clean water. And then I have this paper towel in between so I can dry my brush off. Um, so just to show you how that works, I will take some water on my brush and let's say I wanna do these leaves first. I could get a little bit of green paint by rubbing the water on top of my brush and you can see it kind of changed colors a little bit. Now I've got green on my brush and I can paint my leaf. And you can go right over top of those ink lines. That's kind of the nice thing about using India ink or using Sharpie is that watercolor will go right over top of it and it's not going to mess up our lines because it's permanent. Now when I need more, I get more paint and I keep going. If I need more paint, let's say my paint starts, it's doing it right now, let's say my paint starts to dry out a little bit, it needs more water. I can't just put my dirty brush yeah, I'm gonna need more paint. I can't put my dirty brush right back in the clean water. I have to wash it first in one of my cups, dry it off, then I can get more water for my paint. And I'm gonna do that pretty easily, but I'm gonna start painting in my spaces. it's done. I thought that came out pretty cool. I like it. I like all the colors. Um, I wish my colors were a little bit darker, but that can also always be done by going back over this at a later time, especially that orange. That orange ended up being pretty yellow to me, but I like it, and I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Remember, you can color yours with whatever you want to. If you did do paint, let it dry. Um, and then you can hang it up on the fridge and be super duper proud of yourself. But thank you for joining me today and I will see y'all next time. Bye.